Hey there, I'm Sandy Alnock. Thank you for tolerating another crazy opening. But this is part two of the video. This first part here, the chicken, the rooster, was drawn in part one. So I'll put a link in the doobly-doo and at the end screen of this video, if you want to go see that, it has some beginner tips for feathering. And then we're going to talk about the disco ball. Now this was shot at night, believe it or not. I was lighting this entire room via the disco ball and a flashlight, just very simply from a distance. And as soon as I put my hand over it, it started looking more like what I wanted because I wanted to see what the disco ball was going to look like at night for the finished piece. And you can see it just kind of makes a red glow coming through my skin, which gave me an idea. I have this very cool soundboard I use and the soundboard I just placed right underneath of where the disco ball is. And I got to just sit for the longest time and watch this thing spin. Well, I had to spin it myself. It's not a powered one. It's just a thing that hangs there. And I just watched it. I was watching how the colors play. I was watching where the light lines are versus where the dark lines are in between the mirrored panels. And we'll talk about that as I get busy doing the drawing. But it was just an exercise in studying what something looks like so that I could figure out a way to replicate it. Now, when you're drawing a sphere like this and you want to have all these lines around it, notice that I didn't try to be careful with it because my mirrors on my disco ball were just all over the place. Nothing was actually lined up particularly well, so I didn't stress out about it. But what happens with a sphere is that around the edges, it starts getting smaller, both in the horizontal, like the you know equator line might be straight, but everything else starts getting smaller and more curved as it gets to the top and bottom. It does the same thing on the left and right. So that middle line is straight, and then the lines get more and more round and more closer together. I didn't do a really great job of that distance in between them, but it, it'll be good enough for horseshoes and hand grenades or disco balls, as they say. My dad used to say horseshoes and hand grenades, and I don't really know what that means. I probably should Google it to find out, but we will add disco ball to that list. So then I took my kneaded eraser so I could erase those pencil lines and just leave them as general guidelines so that the light colors wouldn't trap a whole bunch of graphite underneath of them the way that alcohol markers do. But by the time I got done, I didn't really need to have worried about that too much because you'll see how it plays out. I started by trying to put some colors in that were colors on the chicken. So you'll see some pinks and reds and yellows and then some others that would be more nighttime colors, you know, blues and purples because that's what I was seeing in the disco ball, in addition to some of the funky colors that were on the soundboard. And I thought I'd bring some of those in. So I've got, you know, all, just all different kinds of colors. And there was no real science to trying to make them reflect in a particular way. What I did was start with some of the colors that I knew I wanted to have in a particular spot that would be bright. Like I wanted a, a place that would be very white surrounded by pink so that there would be one bigger glow than in other places. And then just some random squares around it, I'm gonna use some masking to keep them white or keep them bright colors and let everything else fall underneath of some airbrush because I'm gonna go kind of airbrush crazy on this. As I worked on putting more of these squares in, I just got darker and darker with the pens and more muted in colors so that it would start to pull it into nighttime. And you can make a disco ball much simpler than this with many fewer squares in it. I'm just going to tell you this was a little bit much, but it did make for a very detailed piece when I was finished. And given that the chicken is kind of detailed, I thought it kind of goes with it. But I was also trying to keep it scaled because if he was really a chicken that had a disco ball, then maybe it would be, it would have to be far away. So it would have little mir mirrors on it. I don't know. I'm not sure how large a real disco ball is in a real disco because mine is just a junior version from a garage sale. So always save those crazy garage sale finds because, you know, that one cost me a buck and now I get to use it in a piece of art. So I've got all of my color in there. I've got some masking paper. This stuff comes on a big roll, but you can also get it in sheets. I'll link to both in the doobly-doo. And this is such nice masking paper. It has a good bit of sticky to it, but it's super clear, so you can really see through it. A lot of masking papers that I've used are not clear like this, and you end up like trying to put a light under it so you could see through. This makes it so easy to trace anything with a knife. 
like super, super easy. Super, super detailed, however, when you have a piece like this. Not sure what I was thinking, but you know, you, you start a piece of art and you just gotta go with it. So I went with it. The original drawing, if you haven't seen that video, was for uh, Dance Like a Chicken Day, which was a few days ago. And I know that's not a huge holiday that very many people celebrate, but now there is a mascot for that day, that holiday. It's my chicken. So I got my cutting done after a couple hours of cutting and then ended up peeling it up. Some places didn't peel as easily because I hadn't gotten my cutting just perfect. So I had to fuss with it just a little bit, but it worked for the most part. There are going to be some places I'll need to repair around the edges where I, I left a little too much of the masking paper, but it's going to be real easy to figure out. I did leave the floor masked out as well, which meant for now I didn't have to cut out the chicken's legs. And I'm just going to airbrush black across the whole thing. Now, any kind of airbrush, you know, alcohol marker airbrush is going to be shiny on Nina paper. I don't know if there's other papers it won't be shiny on, but you can kind of see how that works out. Uh, you can see the masking paper on here. That is actually a real black. It's just shiny on the surface. Like the light from the window is making it impossible to film. But, you know, you'll see at the end, it actually did work. And it's a very nice black. So I've cut out the disco ball and I'm putting some squares in there so I can have a few pieces that are not going to get touched by the airbrush. And this time, instead of just blasting airbrush everywhere, I'm kind of zoomed in on a few areas right inside of the disco ball. I'm letting some of it spill out. And even though it looks like there's a darker circle or that's going to develop around it because I'm putting another layer basically on there from above, I couldn't see much of any difference. So I wasn't really worried about it. And then once I saw the, from an angle, I realized I could just do some twinklies around there. So there's going to be some sparkles added. Uh, peeling off the masking paper is always the best moment. Always makes me so satisfied, even if I don't get it all peeled up. I also can't peel an egg particularly well or an orange, but it's still satisfying. Now for the manual work on these, remember I talked about some of the mirrors having a black edge in between them, a dark edge. This is actually a dark purple kind of color. Uh, I noticed that in the light areas, it was darker lines in between them that defined the shape between the mirrors. You couldn't always see those lines, but in some areas you could. And then when you get to the darkest areas, those lines are then light. So it's kind of like a weird, I don't know, a science thing probably, but you could see the light just on, on the tips of some of those squares of mirror in the dark spots. So putting both of them together so that in some areas you've got a dark line, some areas you've got a light line worked really well. Now I remasked the bottom part and masked out the, the chicken on the top side and just left the feet masked and the, the little bottom feathers so I could do the ground. I wanted to do a disco floor. So I put just a whole bunch of colors down here at the bottom. I made some lights that are going to be kind of twinkling along the edge of the discotheque in the background and I'm going to merge that black from the background into the black of the disco light area. To make everything look like it's glowing from underneath just required having a whole bunch of color under the flooring itself and then putting the squares of tile over top of them. I was picturing them being like glass tiles with maybe dark around the edges or at least thicker around the edges with some of the color showing through from underneath. So I just used some really light tape and masked off in perspective a bunch of these tiles and airbrushed around them and then airbrushed over top of some of it so that I didn't have so many sharp lines. I'd have to go back in with a pen and do some more work. But I wanted to try to get most of the airbrush tackled before I peeled off the masking. And there you go, the last of the masking came off and I could start really working on details. The little like leg feathers here were just not working really great. I had to do a lot more detail work to try to define them, but they kept kind of bugging me because they were so bright. And what do I do when I get to one area that stumps me? I move to another one. And I wanted to have some edges on each of these glass tiles on the floor so that 
it would just be a little bit more hard edge down there. And I realized what I really wanted was not just those edges, but I wanted some reflections. So something that would make the floor feel shiny. And I know at this angle, it looks just like, oh my gosh, she's making her mess. But really it looks so much better in, in real life. I will show you at the end here. But then I realized I could just start darkening all of these little feathers at the bottom. I could start darkening some feathers in the wings and really make this feel like it was part of the scene instead of suddenly having a bunch of really, 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 really white areas that were all masked out and ended up looking like a sticker. I wanted him to feel like he belonged in the scene. So the last thing to add is sparklies. I needed a little bit of magic because any rooster that's gonna land on the dance floor and try to bust a move is gonna need more than chutzpah. He needs magic. So a little gel pen magic made that come alive. I hope you enjoyed this crazy drawing. If you see it on the Copic Awards website, which I'll be linking in the doobly-doo, then go vote for it. I think in the past they have had an opportunity for viewers to vote for your favorite piece and it would be kind of fun to get a little attention for disco chicken and come back next week on tuesday i'll show you some new colors in a different brand of alcohol markers and it might be a little bit of fun because we're going to talk about numbering systems don't let your brain melt down i will explain tuesday i'll see you guys later ta-ta for now go create something every single day see ya